Hi people, welcome to the second part of this tutorial about drawing in AutoCAD. Here I will focus on more tools to modify objects and also the command hatch for filling enclosed areas. Let's start. Rotate. This is used to rotate objects around a specific point. In this example, I am going to click on the icon Rotate, select the objects and now I have to specify a point where I can rotate the object around. Click on the arc center and you can understand how it rotates. If I select this corner, it would rotate around there. Simple. However, if I have non-orthogonal objects and I want to rotate them to have vertical and horizontal lines, I can see that this way want to be effective. So, at the command bar, you can see I can enter a reference. Then I draw a reference line between these two points. And I can turn back the drawing to the previous position. That's how it looks now. Offset. This is a very useful tool to draw parallel lines or inscribe polylines or circles. Look at this example. I'm going to draw the same inscribed polyline here, at a distance of 30 from the original. Click on the command offset, this one. For the offset distance, specify 30. Click on the polyline, move the pointer inside and click again to place the new object. Then I can press escape to exit the command or select another object. Let's click again on the polyline. Keep the same distance, but this time I offset the object to the opposite direction, in this way. Now let's look to the next example. I switch on offset again, but this time I'm going to use the mode through. When it prompts me to specify the offset distance, one of the options in the command bar is through. I click on it, then I want to offset this line, but instead of a specific distance, I click on certain points. Then I select the object again to offset it on the next corner. Multiple. With this mode, I can just offset an object several times without selecting it again. I can just offset an object several times without selecting it again. Now let's look to a situation in which I notice that several people are struggling. On the drawing at the left, the objects are lines. I'm going to apply offset to them with them as the offset distance. And this is what happens. And usually that's not what people expect. However, if you do the same process to a polyline, the result is very different. Array. The command array is used to copy objects in a pattern. If we click on the arrow next to the array command, we can see that there are three modes for array. Rectangle array, path array and polar array. Let's start with rectangle array. We have to select the objects, press enter and as you see the objects were copied in a matrix way and the temporary tab to edit the array objects has opened in the ribbon. Here we can specify the number of columns and rows. Also, set up the distances between the objects. For example, the rectangle array can be useful for elevation drawings like this one. I want to keep the same number of columns and arrows, but I want to change the distances between the objects. This blank is for the horizontal distance between two array objects, which I want to specify it as 5000. The vertical distance between two windows is actually the floor height. I put for it 2600. Polar array. Here I multiply objects around the circle. 
I click on Polar Array, select this little circle, then I have to specify a radius where the objects will be placed around. I hove this circle and the object snap mode center appeared. I click on it and as you see the objects are placed around the center. On the Array tab, this panel here didn't show up for a rectangular ar array. On the first tab, I can change the number of items. For example, let's put 8 and click in a different place. And the angle between two objects automatically changes in order to distribute them equally along the circle. Stretch. With this command, I can stretch objects from a place that I specify. I am going to show you how to solve this example. I click on the command. I select only the objects I want to stretch. As I don't want to move this side, I keep it unselected. Then, I click on the point here to stretch the objects to the right. Finally, I insert a length 50, for example. This command is not hard to use, but it requires a bit of practice in the beginning. So, it's normal if you don't get everything at the first time. Example 2. This time, I'm going to stretch from here, but the main thing I want to show you is that you can extend the dimension lines also. I select all these objects, press Enter. Click here for the base point and you can see the dimension line resizing. Look what happens when I move the pointer up and down. I am going to extend this 100. Explode. This command is used for dividing compound objects in simple ones. For example, if we explode the polyline, it will be converted to lines or arcs. If we explode the block, we kind of downgrade it to the original objects at the time we created it. Applying this in an array, I activate explode and you can see it makes each pattern separate. Hatch. This fills enclosed areas with a single color, a pattern or a gradient. I am going to explain to you. To activate Hatch, I click on the command and at the same moment a temporary tab for Hatch creation appears in the ribbon. I click on an enclosed area, for example between these two polylines and press enter. It's simple as you can see. Now I select the hatch object and in this panel you can change the pattern. I click on solid and that means I fill with a single color only. Also I can click on this icon to get access to more patterns. Now, let's click on this one. And this is important, we can't see any difference unless we zoom in here. Aha! So, when this happens, we have to increase the scale in this tab. I'm going to type 20 and now it looks good. So, in these arrows I can increase or decrease the size as I like. Then, you can explore the patterns by yourself. There are more options here. In this bar, you can change the angle. And in the first one, the transparency. I can also apply a gradient in a hatch selection. For example, I choose this one. And on this panel, I can change the colors. I want to show you a last tip. When selecting objects, I can fill several enclosed areas and press enter just at the end. By doing this, they act as a single object. 
Okay, so you just reached the end of this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and if you need extra help, I can give you online private lessons. Send me an email for more information. Of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you know what to do. Thank you and till the next tutorial.